Welcome back to Tom's Paint Shop. Yeah. Garage time. Let me show you what I've got done so far this week. I reorganized my tool board here and got rid of all the hammers. I want to get all my sanding blocks, all my sanding supplies up on this board so I'm not setting them down in strange places and uh, looking for sandpaper and getting the wrong sandpaper and so forth. So this is a big help. From the top, I have my sandpapers. This is Indossa paper. I actually like it quite a lot. And that's 80 grit, uh, 180, 220, 400. Scissors to cut the paper. That's just water when uh, doing wet sanding or just cleaning off dust. Mixing board, mixing sticks. That's my respirator and goggles in a plastic bag. The plastic bag kind of keeps the charcoal cartridges uh, fresher. They last longer. Uh, strainers, there's tape. Um, all my sanding blocks, including this uh, little plexiglass guy, the uh, filler spreaders, dust mask, gloves. This is the uh, waterborne wax and grease remover in a spray bottle there and just some extra stuff that I've had here in the past. I relocated some stuff down here, but this is more sanding supplies, the big mixing board, the hardeners, dry guide coat. Uh, this is for kind of scrubbing the undercoating. That's why that's so dirty. Of course, you need music when you're sanding. That's my little speaker. And then down here, I didn't move my hammers very far because old habits are hard to break. But this is all my, uh, my dollies and hammers. So these are the three hammers that I've done basically all the work to this car with. Um, you know, this sort of long double-ended one is my favorite one, but this one is modified. It's got that pointy section. This is uh, just a cheap hammer, but uh, that's all I've used. And then a lot of custom um, dollies down there. Some of my favorite dollies are in there too, but I won't be needing them anymore because that part is done. Okay, I covered this a little bit in last week's video. I've been adding some fiberglass to my bumpers. Because I'm using custom bumperettes, I've been adding some fiberglass to the edge so that I can actually attach the two together. Off camera this week, I did the other side. So now I'm all cut up to you guys. Let me show you. And of course, there's going to be sanding this week. Before I could really block sand across the whole side of the car, I need to put in the weather stripping. I removed the weather stripping when I was welding the roll cage in and uh, getting things in and out of the car. But now it's important to have that in because that is what controls the position of the door to some degree. I mean, obviously the hinges and the latches are primary, but that rubber uh, pushes against the latches and it's very, very important to have it in. So I'm going to be cleaning out that channel and preparing it for paint as well, but uh, definitely want to get that uh, rubber back in there so I can sand across the whole side of the car. <laughs> I just stopped to change the sandpaper and I just want to show you the first pass on the roof section. Now, I didn't spray this primer that great. This is with the Harbor Freight gun and there's a lot of texture in the primer itself. So what you can see is what's been sanded, what hasn't been sanded. And I just wanted to show you, you know, here's an unsanded spot. This is a little bit low and then some other spots are a little bit high. You know, here's a little high spot right here. So I'm going to keep with the 220 until all of this 
um, gradient is gone, all of the texture is gone, and then I switch to 400 with a little bit of guide coat. Now, I'm not gonna show all the sanding on this car because I feel like it's boring and I've shown a lot of that already. If you have any particular uh, questions or you wanna see something in next week's video, please let me know. Uh, I, I think it's going quite well. I'm not an expert painter, but I can at least give you my experience. And uh, so let me know next, next video. I'll try to uh, answer your questions. All right, so I've already block sanded the whole side of this car and I did sand through to the metal. Uh, one in this arch area, which is uh, kind of to be expected, it's on the edge, and this is highly modified. This whole uh, arch has been added, including the RS profile. So um, that's to be expected. I'm gonna have to put some epoxy primer over that because it is bare metal. And then I had trouble with this door, trying to get it level. Um, I did break through in a few spots, one right here. You can see a little bit of metal right here and a little bit right there. And as soon as I see metal, I stop. So I am going to have to put more epoxy primer on the door to keep the metal from causing corrosion in the future. And I will probably do a, a kind of a spot repair of uh, additional 2K primer on this just because I had some difficult times getting it level. As it is now, it is quite level. Um, I don't see, you know, I'm using a really long block and I feel like it is really level but I just want a little insurance. I'll probably do two more coats of 2K primer on probably just the door only. The rest of the car is coming out really nice. All right, despite spending a lot of time on the car this week, I mean, that's to be expected for paint prep, but things are going pretty well. And I want to remind you guys sort of back in the metalwork phases, you know, how much effort I put in to getting panels to line up and also during the block sanding phase with the filler. So I want you guys to watch those videos again. I'm going to link my favorite videos that, re that really get me to where I am today. Um, I'm, this might look easy on YouTube. Um, it, it's, it's not easy, but it all sort of comes together from way back in the metalwork phase. So at the end of this video, click those little rectangles and check out those. That's where I think the hard work is. And that's a wrap. Have a good weekend, guys. Take care.